on page 10. We need to be able to solve algebraically. Algebraically just means that you are not going to graph. And the reason is that sometimes we saw with the decimal and calculator, you get some really weird decimal and fraction answers. So it says today we're going to look at another way to solve that's not graphing. We're going to look at what's called the F algebraic model, which is the substitution method that we are looking at. So if we are taking a look at this first one, this might kind of take you back to your elementary days. It says the star equals 3, so the star plus 6, if we are adding that, should be 9. Please write that in. If m is equal to negative 2, and again, this might be kind of when you looked at it in early elementary, you were just asked to replace the m, right, with negative 2, and maybe you didn't have negative, so that probably wasn't until 6th or 7th grade. So negative 2 plus 5 is actually going to leave us with 3. Then it says, okay, if this red circle is 4, and this green pentagon is negative 1, we would be looking at what solution? And we should have 3. So if you think of these types of problems, when did you maybe first encounter these? Well, the circle and that, or the stars and the circle and the uh, pentagon, that was probably your elementary, except they always gave you nice positive numbers instead of maybe negative when you looked at those. So, I want you to listen to this as I talk about this tug of war as we are looking at it. So it says, we're going to think about this in terms of the tug of war. One side, there are four acrobats. So I'm going to think of this as 4A. If you would write 4A also on your paper as we are doing this. So four acrobats, and they have ink equal strength to the other side where there are five grammas. So this is my 5G if I am looking at that. So I have... Four acrobats equaling five grams. Okay? The next tug of war in round two, it says on each side, there's Ivan the dog. So if I am looking at that, I might use I for Ivan, right? And on the other side, there are two grandmas and an acrobat. So 2G plus an acrobat. I'm getting lots of variables in this one, and ours is usually only going to have two variables that we look at. So tug around round three, it says, so on one side, there is Ivan, right? So I, there are three grandmas, and on the other side, there are four acrobats. And the question is, who do we think is going to win? Well, let's keep in mind that I is equal to what? Up here, how many? Two grandmas? and an acrobat. So we actually have on this side five grandmas plus an acrobat, right? Comparing it to four acrobats. But what else did we know at the beginning that four acrobats is equal to five grammars, right? So this 4A is really the same as five grammas. So which one should win? This dog with the three grammas, this one should be the winner. Right? If we are looking at this, this should be our winner as we look at that. And this is kind of a way of looking at it, comparing these, because if I have five grandmas plus this acrobat, obviously we got one more on this side than we did on this side, so they should be stronger. Now, our equations are not going to look like that. We are going to watch this video as we take a look at this. So if you would turn it. Let's recall that a system of equations is two or more equations with the same variable. A system of linear equations, which we will be studying in this lesson, is when you have two or more linear equations with the same variable. There are three examples below. A solution to a system are values of x and y written as a coordinate point, x, y, that satisfy each equation. That's you can always solve yesterday. systems by graphing, but this is a difficult method to find exact solutions. We typically use algebraic methods to find exact solutions. There are two methods for solving systems algebraically, substitution and elimination. I would explain the idea of substitution by showing how you substitute it in your mathematical task. Here, we have two problems where we've used substitutions previously. In the first problem, x squared plus 9, where x is equal to negative 8, I'm going to substitute negative 8 for x. I'm just going to plug it in. And typically when we substitute, we've done these, so we check. Parentheses around we substitute. 
So I get negative 8 squared is positive 54 plus 9 equals 73. And the next problem, y equals 2x minus 4, where x is 3. Again, I know what x is. I'm going to substitute it in for x, 3 in for x. Now yet y equals, well, 2x is the same as 2 times x, so 2 times 3 minus 4. Again, using parentheses. So in this case, y is 6 minus 4, or y equals 2. Let's see how this idea works. This is the one you're doing in your system. notes. Solve the following system by substitution. y equals negative 3x plus 5, and 5x minus 4y equals negative 3. When you have an equation in slope-intercept form, y is by itself. Slope-intercept form, if you remember, is y equals mx plus b. So we know that y equals all this. So circle that in your notes, just like she's doing. Two equations that work together. So the x and y values are the same. So if y equals all of this, I can substitute it in for the y below. And I'm going to substitute using parentheses as we did previously. So we have 5x minus 4. And instead of y, I'm going to put in our substitution. Equals negative 3. Now, like in the previous examples, I am going to... So notice... She didn't just put in negative 3. She actually put in negative 3x plus 5. Okay. So you are replacing the y with what y is equal to. It's kind of like that star. We think now there's more stuff, right? So what is she going to have to do? Well, one thing, sometimes I would recommend that anytime you have subtraction, a lot of you like to change that to plus or negative. That's going to be helpful so you don't make as many mistakes. But we are going to have to, and you're going to see her explain now, using the distributive property, okay? I need to simplify and solve for the variable Keep that I writing. Have. I'll try and pause it so you can make sure you write here. everything down. So negative 4 times negative 3 is sure. positive 12x, and negative 4 times 5 is negative 20, equals negative 3. 5. Okay. So, she distributed. Make sure you have that copy down in your notes. Now we're going to be continuing with adding the like terms. If x is 12x, it's 17x minus 20 equals negative 3. Well, now the most common mistake I'll see some of you do is you'll subtract 5x here and subtract 5x. These are on the same side of the equal sign, right? So when they are on the same side, you have to do what's between them, which is to add them, okay? Just solving an equation. Notice... When I made my substitution step, I went from having two variables, x and y, to having only one variable. This allows us to actually solve the equation as we've done in the past. Now we need inverse operations. Add 20 to both sides. The 20s cancel. I get 17x equals 17. Divide by 17, again, inverse operations. And x equals 1. Okay. So... I know she talked quite, kind of fast, so make sure you're writing that down. Keep the equal sign between the 17x and the 17, right? And now we are going to put x equals 1. So some of you on that last test, on the final, you told me when you got to this point, x was all real numbers. It's not, right? It is actually just one number. But what did we say yesterday? Our answers had to be, when we had a system, they always had to be in a parenthesis and it had to be an xy. So now kind of on that. This white space on yours, you're going to finish solving it. So, But we're not done because we know that a solution to a system is of the form x, y. We already have x. Now we need to find y. To find y, we can plug in x into either of these two equations. But notice, this first, the first equation, one's y easier, is already right? by itself. So let's plug in x our first equation. Negative 3 times 1 plus 5. So y equals negative 3 plus 5, and y is 2. So it looks like our solution is 1 comma 2, 1, 2. Now, if you want to, we can actually substitute it into the second equation. Let's just try it to show you that it works no matter what equation you use. Again, substitute 1 for x over here. 5 minus 4y equals negative 3, subtract 5, negative 4y equals negative 8, divide by negative 4, and y equals 2. 
So when you take a look at this, does it matter which equation, and I'm going to give you time to write this down, does it matter which equation you use to get the second value? You always have to have an x and a y. Okay? What they did is they showed, and for some reason, I don't know why, but I'll have students, sometimes no one wants to pick the easy one for solving for y. They'll go to the difficult one. Which it works in both cases. I just want you to be aware of that. It doesn't matter which one you do, but you need to be aware of these two solutions. Is anyone still writing? Okay. That we just finished solving for the video. I'm not going to fill in that part of the notes because you should have that from before. But now we want to look at solving on the next ones down. And the key thing I want you to think about is that solving the system using substitution. Because this one, wouldn't this be ugly to graph? This has a y-intercept of negative 32. We do not want to go down on a graph to negative 32 and try and find the point of intersection. So when I look at these, the first thing I notice, it says find the isolated variable. Is y equal or x equal? Oh, y equals. Circle it. Right? Circle what y is equal to. So paying attention up here, those of you that are watching. So circle what y is equal to. It says then substitute that y or x in. So we are going to go to our second equation. Okay? So I'm going to take the second equation and I'm going to write x plus y equals negative 32. But instead of using y, what do we know y is equal to? 3x. Yeah. So replace the y with 3x equals negative 32. Just as she said in the video, my hint is put it in a parenthesis. All the parenthesis does is kind of separate. Do I have to multiply this time anything times 3x? Is there anything right in front of this parenthesis? No. So I'm adding 1x plus 3x, so I get 4x equals negative 32. I am going to divide both sides by 4. It's a simple solving equation now, so it's even easier than some of the ones that we saw in that final. And my x value is negative 8. Okay. Keep in mind that my answer always has to be an x comma y, and you want to keep it with a parenthesis. So, substitute your answer into one of the original equations. If I'm looking at the original equations as I look at it, which one do I want to take a look at, Alexander? Do I want to use the first equation, y equals 3x, or the second one? Both of these are pretty easy. Second one, okay? So, he chose the second equation. Some of you might chose to choose the first one. If we're looking at the second one, we would go with, instead of x plus y equals negative 32, we would put negative 8 plus y equals negative 32. If I am solving that equation, what am I going to have to do next, Galea, as I'm looking at them? To get the y by itself? I'm going to plus 8. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides. If I add 8 to negative 32, my y value, as I look at that, Josh, should be 8, negative 32 plus 8. Negative 32, Josh, plus 8. 24. 24. I want to go to that first equation. In the first equation, if I wanted to check it, this is my first equation. If I was looking at the first equation, Maddox, I had y equals 3x. I would have taken y equals 3 times negative 8. Do I get the same answer? For y. Yeah. Yeah, negative 24. Yeah. So when I put my solution, I need to write it as negative 8 comma negative 24. Those two numbers have to work in both equations. Okay? So when I look at it, they must work in both equations. Y is equal to. In this system, so put behind here our solution. It's going to be an x comma y. Circle y. So what should I be circling if I look at that first one, George? Uh, the 5y minus 7. Correct. 5y minus 7, what x is equal to, right? Okay. In the second one, you got a choice, Brad. Which one do you want to circle? Because they're both y equal, right? So which should I circle? 2x plus 7 or x minus 1? 
two x plus x. Would it matter which one you circle? No. In this one, let's go to the equation. We're going to write, does the negative 3y change? No. Minus 2, now we put a parenthesis. What did we say x was equal to as I looked at it, Liz? So we circle 5y minus 7. And all of that equals negative 12. So I, if I'm looking at this equation, I really don't like all these minuses. I'm going to change this to plus a negative 2. I'm going to change this to plus a negative 7. So that I make less mistakes when I start to distribute. Okay? So I have negative 3y. I'm taking negative 2 times 5y. That's going to give me a negative 10y. These are my like terms on the same side of the equal sign. Negative 2 times negative 7 gives me plus 14. I need you to sit up, please. Equaling negative 12. Right, Mr. Clinton? We're going to add these two together. We get negative 13y plus 14 equals negative 12. Next step as I'm looking at it, Isabel, what do you think you want to do? To get negative 13y by itself. Get rid of 14, subtract 14. When we subtract 14 on both sides of my equal sign, I have negative 13y is equal to when I am adding that negative 12 and negative 14 I add, what do you end up with? Negative Ooh, careful. Negative 12 minus 14 is the same as negative 12 plus a negative 14. So the temperature like today is going down, down, down. Negative what? 26. Does that make sense? They're both negative. So I have a negative 12 minus 14. This is where you need to be really careful with that integer operations. You might think of that as plus a negative 14, right? Subtracting 14 is the same as adding a negative when you think about that. So Morgan, if I'm finishing this problem, what do I need to do to solve for y? Divide both sides by negative 13. Negative 13. And when I divide by negative 13, I get my solution of x is 2. So I want to put x is 2. And to me, this first equation is the easiest one to find my y, right? I'm not going to go to that second one. I have a ton of stuff to do in the second equation. The first equation says x equals, and if I'm looking at that, we just saw, uh, ooh, this is an x, this is y, right? No one was going to correct you? So that's a super easy mistake that I'll have students make, right? They'll change it, and they'll go, oh, it's the first one I solved for, so I'm going to put it first. So be really careful. This is our y, too. Okay? Make sure you put in the y. Okay? So the y is 2. We now are going to go to this equation that said x equals 5 times, replace y with 2, minus 7. So if I'm looking at it, x equals 10 minus 7, x will be equal to 3. I'm going to take a look at my problem. So when you do your homework, as you are looking at these, you're going to be looking for your solution. I always need an x and a y for my answer in a parenthesis. Once you get those two, instead of leaving them separate like this, making sure which equation you're using to substitute in, and then our final answer here was going to be 3, 2. As we look at that second equation, right, Kaizen, instead of writing y here in the second problem, what did we say y equals from the first one? What did we circle? So we put negative 2x plus 7 equals, and we're going to keep this side exactly the same, and x two. minus y. Was it positive 2? Yeah. It was positive 2. Thank you. Okay. So we circled this. We're replacing the y with exactly what we said it's equal to. The reason we have to replace it is we can't solve a problem when there's two different variables. But if there's one variable, you can solve it because you've been solving equations like that since the beginning of the year as we are looking at this. So then I now need to get all my variables on one side. 
Do you want to subtract two x or do you want to subtract x? Which one? Subtract x. Subtract x. So if we subtract x, the reason this time we're subtracting and not adding them together, here they were on the same side of the equal sign, here they're on opposite sides of my equal sign. So I have to get all the variables on one side. So 2x minus x leaves me with 1x if you want to put that, or you could just leave it as x equals negative 1. Next step as I'm looking at it, Grady, is to do what to get our x by itself? Um, I want to get the 1x by itself. So I don't want to get the, this 1x plus 7 by itself. I only want 1x here. How do I get rid of a plus 7? The opposite or the inverse. Not one, but minus seven, right? You said minus one. minus seven. Okay, so I'm going to go with minus seven. So I got negative one, and if you wanted to think of it, it's plus a negative seven, right? So we get x equals to negative eight. Once I get x equals to negative eight, which one looks easier, first or second? So x equals negative eight. Which one looks easier to you guys? The second. I think the second one, right? So we're going to go to that second equation, and we're going to write y equals, but instead of putting in x, we just found that x was equal to negative 8. So we write negative 8 minus 1, and negative 8 minus 1 gives me negative 1. Can I check it? So, Amber, we want to check this. So if I'm going to do the check, I need to go to the first equation. If I go to the first equation, what did we know y was equal to? So I'm going to put negative 9 because we know that this is my y. And the question is, does it equal 2 times what? 2 times negative 8 plus 7. So this is negative 16 plus 7. Negative 16 plus 7 equal to negative 9. This check. This does equal negative 9. So it has to work in both when we take a look at it. Now, on the bottom of this page, what you are looking at, okay? So if you take a look at the bottom of this page, this is where we get into those special solutions, okay? So we just have this last little page of notes that we're going to look at, and hopefully get you started on your homework pretty quick. So when we are taking a look at this bottom page, key thing to remember, if you get 2 equals 2 and your variables cancel, we are going to say that then there is infinitely many. So if it's true, that's when you tell me infinitely many solutions. Okay? If it is false, so just like when we solved our equation, it's false, you get 8 equals 2, you are then going to tell me no solution. Okay? If you get a false statement, we're going to say no solution. So as you are taking a look at this, I'm going to circle. We are going to replace that with my x right in this equation. So as you take a look at writing this, we are going to write 3.5. And then put your parentheses. Josh, you writing with me? 3.5 minus times parentheses negative 2y plus 4 plus 7y. Three and a half times negative two gives us negative seven. Three and a half times four, again, we're distributing. So making sure if we are looking at that, that's 14. Well, what happens when you add negative seven and positive seven? It's zero. So 14 equals 14. And we would say infinitely many. So this is when you would have graphed this on the when we were doing the graphing. These two came out to be the exact same line, right? It was one line on top of the other one. Remember, we had infinitely many graphs. Here, when we are looking at it, we know that y equals 3x. So we're going to be putting that in place of this y. So as we start writing, we are going to have 3x minus 11 minus 3x
we're going to add our like terms. And when I add those like terms, that gives me negative 11 equals negative 13, because these are on the same side of the equal sign. Positive 3, negative 3 gives me 0. And because it's a false statement, we are going to say no solution. If you would have graphed this, you would have seen two parallel lines, right? This would have been our parallel lines if we were graphing. So, your homework is on page 32 tonight. Tonight are parent-teacher conferences, 4.15 to 7.30 about, 7.45. So, if you and or your parents or you are coming, um, some of the information we'll probably be sharing is your mask, how you've been doing on some of those ELOs. Um, I'm going to hand back your project in just a minute. Um, as you take a look at the questions here, one of the first things that I want you to do is go through and circle right now for questions one through uh, one through eight. Circle what you know one variable is equal to, and then we're going to put that up here. This doesn't really matter what we catch Shelby. Which one do you want to circle? Because they both are y equals. Circle one. That means when I go to write this one for number four, I'm going to go to the first one, and I'm going to put, instead of y, I'm going to put this 5x equals the 4x plus 1, right? If I'm looking at number five, what should I be circling, Carson? Um, x equals y minus 6. I'm going to circle the y minus 6. That means I want to replace that x with that, right, when I look at it. Amy, if I'm looking at number six, what should I be circling? No, wait, go back to, okay, we'll go to number eight. Sure. Circle it in number eight. That's all right. Number six, what do you have for me? Or Cart. Cameron. I'm going to circle the two X minus eight. Jonathan, if you look at number seven, what should I be circling? So this is what we are substituting in for the X or the Y. And as you look at those last ones, it says how many solutions, mark in number nine, which one should I be circling to substitute in? Because you still have to do the work for me. What should I be circling in number nine? I definitely want to put an L. So when I go to solve this, this is my work that I'm going to see. I'm going to see five, but then instead of x, I'm going to see negative three y minus six equals negative uh, plus 15. So the easiest mistake to do is just kind of what I did. People put in the x, and they forget to put the rest of this problem, the plus 15. So make sure you go plus 15y equals negative 30. Now that I only have one variable in the problem, I can solve it. When I have two variables, can't solve that. And again, in this one, I'd probably be circling the 3x minus 6 or I'm going to be with that. So as you are working on your homework, if you have questions, 